got to quite a bit last week. Dan, I was instructed by council to put together an ordinance to allow the police department to surplus that truck to public works.
agreement that we were accepting the 48 hour pay in lieu of any overtime and, and whatever. So just making sure that we're not going to open up a can of worms here that we, we pay them these extra monies and then they turn around and still jab us in the pocket for more. Yes, I can. I do a question. I've seen it at other cities and other uh, companies where people have sued because they weren't paid overtime and they weren't happy with their separation. But I can tell you this: I've read over the um, state law on, on this as far as how this works. Not exempt and non-exempt. Exempt can only be for people that actually supervise two or more. And so there are a lot of cities that have abused this, and so far they've been lucky they haven't gotten sued. Where they have somebody who's say a staff accountant that really doesn't um, oversee anybody, but they pay them the service management days. But they're, most of the cities do it right. They do it only for those who manage and supervise two or more. <coughs> and who, they try not to wear them out as far as, okay, we know managers usually work anywhere from 45 to 55 hours on average. Um, it's expected, but also this management day shows that we're also going to give you this time that's your own and it's done every year. So you can't cash it out. We're right up front with you on that. Other cities do the same. And our, well, actually our attorney, our personal attorney did draw this up. And she knows the law really well, so I'm confident that we're, we're fine. But it's a good question. Councilmember <coughs> Case. Yeah, I think this is a little different than overtime. This is, again, for managers. Uh, it's designed to try to bring our average uh, hourly work year down into a reasonable range. My only question is is, is this going to be front loaded or is it prorated? Is it earned by the month? It's How prorated. For let's say once you get into the year, you can use your day. So if it's somebody who's brand new, we'll prorate it based on that. But if you've been here the last year, you're going to get a full year starting on January <coughs> first, the full 12 days. For this year, what we're going to do is it's going to be 11 days because it would start February first. But yes, yeah, so if somebody's new in the middle of the year, they're only going to get a portion. Or if they come in halfway during the year, they're only going to get a portion. So it's front so loaded. What if they terminate early? They don't get anything. It's not paid. It doesn't pay out on. But what if they use it? So I'm saying we're giving them 12 days for a year, right? But they leave six months into the year, and they use those 12 days before they left. How does that? I don't think it impacts us. I mean, I think that we can't take it back from them. I know that, but the managers have the right of approval in the mayor, so we would really try not to let that happen. That would be up to us to manage it properly. It's a lot easier to manage than the exchange mm -hmm. time. I agree. Right? I think we're, we'll save man hours. <coughs> Good evening again, and I'm glad I get to 
in business with such a light and easy topic after the agenda has been just so easy tonight. Um, I'll go ahead and I, I won't cover everything in the packet, but what I think I would like to do is just to start with the, the memo that I put together as part of the background the information about uh, City Hall and, and the project that's been envisioned to date. And just summarizing the, the memorandum that you have in your packet, and that's beginning on page 76, is that the, the project that uh, when I came to the city, was I was uh, tasked with looking at uh, improving the air quality, indoor air quality of, of the city hall building. And as I've investigated that further, that's taken me a couple different directions. We're uh, seeing where we've been, looking at this issue from different vantage points. And, and as I un unpeel the layers of that onion, one of the things I learned is that there have been three recent indoor air quality studies of, of the building. And they're articulated in a little more detail here. But essentially, the first one started with a concern about em employee sickness in the building. And, and that was a, a small sampling that was looking primarily at airborne uh, mold and, and the mold spores that potentially were in the building. That yielded some results that uh, precipitated another investigation that expanded upon that initial mold examination and also included a limited look at the uh, asbestos. That study too spawned some additional information uh, where a third round of sampling was conducted and it wasn't on the, the mold issue. Uh, with the second round of sampling, the mold issue, it was discovered that yes, there was mold present in the building but the EPA has not adopted a standard of, of a threshold value of what is detrimental to occupants or employees health related to mold. Um, so there's a, a debate in the health community of what that is. I'm not an expert in that, but at this point the EPA has not weighed in and regulated um, the volume of well, mold, airborne mold spores. They have weighed in on asbestos. And, and there was asbestos-containing material found in the building, and it was primarily in the, the flooring material and, and the mastic, largely, that uh, secures the vinyl tile or asbestos-containing material to the flooring material. And, and then at the, with the age of the building, there were a few spot areas that uh, have some asbestos around the piping and the, the plumbing piping. So if that's the uh, airborne investigation that's been conducted to date. Um, I, I will say, even at this juncture, I would not say that a full investigation of the hazards of the building, potential hazards of the building, has been conducted. Even the last round of the uh, asbestos survey did not include this, this room. It did not include the conference room. Uh, or, and so there were a couple of areas of the building that weren't sampled nor was the potential examination of looking at lead-based paint, given the age of the building. That hasn't been an area that's been explored for potential uh, contaminants uh, in the building. So with that review underway and talking with a lot of people, um, looking at some of the deficiencies that are present, I, I won't enumerate all of them here tonight. I mean, you've been occupants and users of the building yourself for, for some time. So you know many of them firsthand, but, but I, I will just kind of just summarize the, the listing of those. The exterior of the building, there are some issues with that. There's, there's energy issues with some of the single pane way, uh, uh, window panes here in this room and the, the conference room and, and the hallway. The roofing material is getting very old and will need to be replaced in a, in a couple, two, three years. Um, so the, the bathroom, uh, the restrooms, they're not ADA accessible. There's plumbing issues, fixture issues for energy efficiency. Um, and going down the list, uh, the communications and technology in, in this room has been talked about since I've been aboard, probably before that. So that's another area that looking at the building, there's some challenges with a, a building that's this age. Um, mechanical, electrical, and plumbing, I won't enumerate all of them other than to say that they are present given that the building is, is 75 years old. Security issues, both from a uh,
staff and public use point of view. One of the things I, I wanted to make sure to share tonight is just an acknowledgement that a couple days a week, this building serves the community as its municipal court. And as an occupant here, uh, during that time frame, security issues can be a real present challenge. Uh, and again, the other issues that go along with that, introducing a whole um, new population to the building with all the other challenges of the, the restrooms and using the facilities, the security, et cetera, et cetera. And, and then looking at the building, this was constructed as, as a school. So its con interior configuration was designed for a different, different purpose altogether. It's been altered and been very accommodating up to this point, but uh, you know, its functionality going forward, 75 years, this potentially could be a time to take a look at that. And then structurally there, there are some issues with related to seismic, uh, given the age of the building, uh, the foundation, uh, the strapping, and just some of the wall securing and, and things like that. So that's kind of the, on, on the deficit side, looking at everything from a very uh, broad perspective. But then looking at the indoor air quality uh, problem and what is, what is possible in, in the realm. So the task that I was, uh, was given was to look at that and what could we do to make some limited improvements that would make a difference to the occupants of the building. One of those differences was to abate the asbestos that's known and is present in the building. Another difference to also help the indoor air quality but also make some energy improvements was to put in a, a centralized heating, ventilating, and air conditioning system that uh, would circulate the air in a manner that uh, you could uh, provide a supply air, a nice um, fresh air supply that could be monitored, distributed throughout the building in an equal fashion, rather than just opening up a window periodically as you, you felt challenged with either getting too hot or, or too cold. And, and then other things with the abatement of the asbestos, that means the flooring, some of the flooring material would be replaced. So it, it presented the opportunity to uh, take care of some of the subfloor issues where they're needed and then replace the carpet. And if you're into it at that point, when you're doing the as, uh, asbestos abatement, you will also put window wraps and different uh, secure uh, this clean plastic to uh, keep the asbestos fibers that are airborne contained and that would probably um, destroy some of the paint that would come off the, the <coughs> duct tape and the material that would fix the this clean plastic. You would need to do some spot repairs on the walls just to acknowledge that. So that presented an opportunity after the abatement to also do a, a fresh coat of paint inside the, inside the building. So with that said, then how do you accomplish all that and keep the city business going on a day-to-day -day basis? The cost to occupy and abate, I did not explore, but I, I talked to an uh, abatement uh, contractor and he said it would treble to uh, four times as if more expensive to do that and occupy the building rather than get out of the building. And based on my past experience and, and work life, I would agree that uh, just the day-to-day the -day configuration of working around uh, contractors doing the work as well as trying to conduct city business with the number of people that come in on a day-to-day -day basis, it really wouldn't be practical to try to uh, abate and occupy the space at the same time. So that meant having to go somewhere else and the site that was looked at, you've heard me speak to before, was on the eastern part of the, the property here and <coughs> local relay paid staff in some modular offices. So on page 78 here, I've articulated what that cost opinion would look like to be able to uh, relocate staff while the building was being abated and upgraded for the indoor air quality improvements. Just cutting to the chase a little bit, to do all that type of work, uh, that's a, about a 400,000, I'll have to get my glasses here and talk, bear with me. A, a little over 400,000, $432,000 to, to make that move. And part of that is that you're actually
actually developing like a private developer or a private contractor. You're developing the property and putting structures on it, and you need to go through all the same type of steps. So you have to do prepare your civil plans. There's grading, clearing, excavation. There's <coughs> utility connections. And then you have the modular offices. You have setup, you have teardown, and, and then an ongoing rental cost. So when you add all that up, that's about $432,000. So that's one cost. And then the other cost to look at doing the uh, um, limited indoor air quality improvements to do the abatement, install new carpeting, provide uh, HVAC upgrades, <coughs> and I did forget to mention, look at uh, providing an uh, emergency power generator for the building to sustain business operations when power is out. But that too ends up about a $490,000 project. Now, that said, that ha does have a contingency of a 25% estimate, as does the cost to, to move out of, out of the building. Now, I recognize that these are rather large numbers, and so you have to look at it. What options do we have? So I articulated five specific uh, actions that uh, council could consider. One is a do-nothing option. We, we just write out the building as it is today. The second one is to commission a facility needs assessment and develop a master plan. The third is undertake the uh, city hall indoor air quality improvement project that's articulated here. And the fourth is to uh, retain and renovate the city hall building. And the fifth is to construct a new city hall. I'll, I'll speak a little bit uh, very, very briefly on, on the five options. There's pros and cons. I, I won't go through all of them, but uh, trying to not set up a uh, straw man arg argument on the do nothing option, I, I honestly, as a, as a professional, I don't think that's a real viable option, but I'll, I'll leave it to you to, to, to discuss am amongst yourself and provide uh, guidance. There are several cons to that. One of the costs of doing nothing is it, it just the problem doesn't get addressed that, uh, with, the, with the building. And the second one for the facility needs assessment and master plan, something I, I need to share that's a part of this, but we haven't dialogued on, is Richard, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think in late 2013, the city bought a uh, former building, uh, a, a steel structure to house public workshop activities in the future up at the reservoir site. So a facility needs assessment and master plan would look at this building, it would look at the senior center, it would look at the community service center, it would look at a future uh, public workshop facility, and then articulate or have an opportunity to really um, investigate what the full facility needs of the cities the city's needs are, and then put some costs behind that and, and provide some professional expertise behind it with an architectural uh, lens. Uh, the third one, I won't spend more time on that, that's the pros and cons of doing the indoor air quality project. Uh, and, and then the fourth one is retain and renovate City Hall. Uh, one of the, the pros of, of that option or anything that's involved with, with City Hall is it does come with an agreement when the city purchased the building originally from the school district that the city has to um, maintain, I'll get the phrase incorrect here, bear with me one second, that the property shall be maintained for general municipal purpose. So there, there is an obligation that the city has with when the um, your predecessors bought the property that it be maintained for some general municipal purpose. And then the fifth and last one, uh, before I take any of your questions or comments, is just to construct a new city hall. Um, on the pro side, there's some, one of the big pros is that staff does not necessarily have to leave the building if it's constructed uh, on location, but in, in just a different, um, in a different place. But again, that obligation would have to be looked at on the general municipal purposes. 
Well, Council, I've given you a lot of information to digest in a very short amount of time, but at this time I'll, I'll stop, and if there are questions, comments, concerns, I'll, I'll address what I can. Council Member King. <coughs> One of the things that when I was reading through this that, that intrigued me a little bit was the statement that the property must be maintained for general municipal use, and I've been led to believe that uh, this purchase and sale, not having seen the purchase and sale agreement, not knowing how to interpret it, that the structure needed to be maintained for general municipal use. And my question is, is that's key to this because obviously when the property was transferred, asbestos wasn't an issue. And I believe if the school district was given this building back, they would demolish it um, rather than try to renovate it or fix it. Uh, I just don't think it's cost effective to rehab this building. Uh, I don't think it serves our purpose. It doesn't meet our needs. Um, I'm not for putting a ton of money into a structure that eventually is going to need to be torn down um, or gutted completely just to maintain a shell for appearances. It's not a historical building. It's not on any historical registries. And so I would like to see the purchase and sale agreement. And if there is some obligation for us to maintain the building, I'd like us to put a small <coughs> committee together to approach the school board to see if they can let us out of that obligation based on what we now know. I, I believe that it would be reasonable. I'm not suggesting we sell the property in any way. We're going to use the property for general municipal purposes. Um, we may try to uh, design it in a manner that provides some income producing uh, spaces in the process. I would hope that we would look along those lines in any design that we offer. But I do think we need to look further into the future. Um, if we're going to do a band-aid, I want to do the cheapest band-aid possible. Um, and if, uh, since I think we know we need something better than what we have and better than what this building can accommodate, we do really need to put together a plan. And I'm for spending the money on a plan uh, and developing a plan <coughs> with experts so that uh, I personally, instead of trying to get grant money to do that, I'd rather spend that money on our own, show them the, the, the crisis that we're in, and try to receive funds with a prepared plan of action rather than trying to get piecemeal of these grants together. And I think we can not knowing the grant process, but just common sense wise, it seems like we would have better luck securing funds if we had a plan in place versus securing funds to put a plan <coughs> together and then resubmitting for more funds. And I envision a three to four phase project for our complex, and, and I'd kind of like to see us move more in that direction. <laughs> I agree with Vic. When this first was brought to us, we were told neighborhood of upwards of four hundred thousand dollars. We are almost at a million dollars. And I would like to see something brought forward to looking at a new design. Like it says, you know, you can put lipstick on a pig. Ten years from now, there will be another issue. You know, like you said, two years from now, after we get this million dollar project done, we could have a look, an earthquake and we'd be gone. Um, this building is lovely as it is. It's time to retire. A million dollars for repair could go towards a new facility that is more up to code. Hopefully, we'll leave the asbestos out. I just I have a hard time throwing a million dollars at this building. So we can come up with. Um, in the conclusion, that's for the air quality. It could be asbestos air samples collected for the PCM analysis would determine to be above the EPA recommended reactive intensity level. Does that is that a good or a bad thing when it's mm -hmm. above? Does that mean it's, it's above the bad line? Or is it below the bad line? This is acceptable. 
That's a question I would like to explore a little bit further, uh, depending on how we continue to occupy the building. If we were to continue to pursue the path of abating, it would be less of a concern. If we pursue the path of occupying the building and, and taking some time to study and do some other things, I would want to research that, but I, but I think it would be something that we, we have to be mindful about. Okay. Um, Council members, if I may, before I, real quick, I, I didn't mention, and I apologize in my haste, that uh, you did see the, the grant potential ask for uh, appropriation out of this uh, state legislature session. So I, I wanted to just make sure that you are aware of that as, as part of the conversation, that the ask was to not only do the indoor air quality component, but also do a little bit more and look at uh, the, the restrooms and, and provide the ADA accessibility <coughs> component. So it was a little bit more, it was an expansive look, and it was something that the city engineer had been working on early uh, last year. And I thought it was worthwhile considering that if we're going to ask for money, let's, let's have a, um, a little bit broader ask to, to have a, a likely, potential likely outcome where we could get the funding. So I, as you consider and, and provide additional uh, questions or comments, that was part of my, my thinking as well. Okay, well, as you know, I've brought this up numerous times. <coughs> point right now, I'm still <coughs> feeling that there was too much staff time spent already on the possibility of moving the modulars in and all the other, everything else going on. I did pass out some conclusions on the air study. So basically what it says, the only thing that we need to probably really address right now would be possibly the air quality of the building. Uh, if you spend a little time here during the day, you go down, and especially into the utility office, you happen to walk in there, and when everybody's in, there's six employees sitting there. There's paper stuff here, 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 stacked up here, stacked up there. I mean, totally inadequate work conditions there, period. Uh, the building has done its service. It's done its use. Let's not spend any more money on it. It has to be necessary absolutely to spend. Let's put our focus forward to a new building and we can build. We have property. We can, don't have to worry about demolishing this structure or whatever. We could maybe down the road convert this to some type of a city meeting rooms or something like this. Uh, once everybody moved out of it, our cost would be less to come in and do some of the necessary improvements on it if we would choose to do it that way and keep the structure like it is. But let's, let's not waste any more time on going forward on this. Let's, let's go forward to look at getting the air quality fixed if that, and find out where we are on that and let's pursue new building. <coughs> I guess my concern on the grant application is that we would be going to the well asking for money with a decent likelihood of getting it with what you're requesting. Then my concern comes back that once we start putting the plan together for the city hall complex, going back and asking for money to help us with that. Um, I feel that once they've looked at our needs, and this is what we present to them, and they felt like they accommodated us, then it might be years, 10, 15 years down the road before they might be willing to look at us again. My opinion, I don't, I'm not an expert in the field of grant writing, um, but it's one of my beefs with government, is all the money gets pushed to the upper levels and then we at the bottom beg to get it back. And uh, it just doesn't make sense that we provide the most services that affect every individual more than, than each level as you go up, but yet the higher, collection rates are at the higher levels. But <clears throat> my concern is, is if we submit a grant to, to do some of this work that you're proposing is that it could hurt us in the future to get what we truly need, which is the new building. And so I'm not a proponent of that option right now. The other thing I wanted to think about was to look at an HVA system. Well, how about air exchangers? That's uh, a little bit cheaper than 
using HVAC and it may accomplish the same thing for us. Uh, I think we should possibly look at that. And the other thing is, again, the, the studies we see say that the asbestos, there were no asbestos findings, and you're stating that in one of them there were, and so that does concern me, and so I would like to see the three studies and the results of all three so that we, we know what we're dealing with. And, uh, my last thing I wanted to discuss is, as an option is <coughs> if the asbestos is contained in the floor, and obviously by walking on the floor we could be de degradating the tiles that are underneath, it seems to me that there is a way to seal the floor, whether it's the extreme thick polyurethane flooring or uh, plastic uh, sheeting that can go down, uh, and then put plywood, screw plywood over that so that you're not doing any uh, Release of the asbestos underneath, and then and then put carpet on top of that, caulk the edges, and that could seal each of the rooms and, and prevent that asbestos from getting free. Um, and I'd like to see if that's an option that is viable, so that we can look long term, because that's something that could be done while we're occupying the building. Uh, and and then with the use of air exchangers, we could exchange the air like all of our houses have. Our furnaces are designed to kick on once or twice a day and it exchanges all of the air in our house. And it seems like we should be able to come up with a system that's a little cheaper than an HVAC system and again, save as much money as possible and dedicate that money toward the design and, and the matching funds of any potential grants we could get and, and then look at other ways through the Finance Committee and Public Works on how we could possibly fund uh, this new, a new complex. So I guess I'm going to need to know, Lance is going to need to know, um, this capital needs request has to be turned in if we are going to get any funding at all. If they wanted it last week, we held off to bring it in front of council before turning it in. Um, I sat down with Representative Koshmar's assistant and I sat down with Senator, or Representative Koshmar's assistant and Senator Melosha last Friday when I was down in Olympia. Um, they feel very strongly that the City of Pacific will probably get capital funding for the issues that we're talking about, the asbestos, the ADA compliance, and, and the air quality, that they felt very confident that money um, could come to Pacific. They're very um, um, strong requests, strong needs that the city has, and there are things that they would like to address as well. I have also invited, and I believe you will see all three uh, representatives from our district, Senator Melosha, as well as Representative Kashmar, and Representative Gregory, on February 9th to talk about some things that are going on, but they're coming down here for a tour as well to see what we're looking at, we think. So I guess. The biggest thing I need to know is, is council okay for us to turn this request in? If not, we're not going to get any capital needs funding. I'm not for it because I think it hurts us in the long run in getting the funds that we truly need, which is a new facility. I think we could, <coughs> if we address those issues this year through the state, then we hurt ourselves in trying to get the funds that we need. Those same issues will be present next year. If we do the work this year to develop a, a comprehensive plan on uh, you know, a multi-phase project, those same needs are still here and I think we have a better chance of getting more funding to, to get what we truly need. I think it's a <coughs> Right now, the, the need is for our air quality issues, and there is some concern about the asbestos, even though I have to say that I'm a little subjective on the asbestos, because in most cases, unless it's stirred, it will stay fairly stable. Now, um, and the amount of examination of the asbestos is very, very minimal in relationship to this whole building as a whole. But the fact of the matter is that we have representatives thinking that the city may be able to access funds in relation to our ADA. You know, we're talking about facilities in the bathroom, access to the building, which is very limited, and um, specific.
justice issues, as well as our recirculation of the air. That's the biggest one of the biggest issues. Not so much air conditioning or central air, but we're looking at circulation of, of the air in the building. Um, it, <coughs> we all know this is a stopgap. This is not a hand on future condition, but it would go to uh, a great level to make sure that this building for several years <coughs> is prepared to be utilized without having an impact to the health and welfare of the people that use the building. I do believe we do need to look at the future. We've, been, we've already done that several years ago under two couple previous mayors. What exactly all that information went to or not is something we can look at, but I do believe in the long term a city hall campus in this facility, in this location, or uh, another location to establish a new future facility that can be utilized by not just City Hall, but uh, you know, community involvement, uh, a new structure related to our public works, you know, as a whole compound. That does need to be taken care of, it does need to be researched and professionally done. And uh, it's something that we, I think we probably also should seek grants for support that design. It, it, it's, it's staging. Everything, you know, I'm not a grant writer, but I've seen a few in the last few years, and we can do things by staging. We, we take care of the initial issue related to the building, we look at grants in relationship to the design and development, and then once we have a plan, we can go after the grants for the, for the construction and, and the building of the new compound. So, I think it's just a tier structure, and I think we need to allow the city in my opinion, move forward with the grant. I agree. So if, if we have a really strong <coughs> opportunity to get the grant now, granted, we want a, a city hall down the road, we have no plan. Aside from us sitting here saying we want a new one, there's nothing <coughs> on the roadmap. It's going to be five years before we, we have that. And the whole time, our employees are sitting here in, in conditions that we've been presented that are not ideal. Let's take the money, do what we can, and when we, we have an opportunity to build New City Hall, we have something here that's, that's been upgraded. It's, it's ADA compliant. It's meeting space. It's expanding the senior program. It's, we have space. We build a New City Hall next door. But I don't see giving up $700,000 for a chance of getting more money five years down the road. It doesn't seem, I mean, it seems characteristic for us to sit and wait, but we should do it. Yes, um, this one of you right. have to well, I, just, I just can't see, you know, these politicians, but the, you know, use of some common sense that it's just not feasible to put $700,000 into this. You know, and explain to them what our plans are and get some help from them to get some design work and whatever so we can move faster than five years. But I don't know. Try to get common sense out of some politicians is not very handy either. So, thank you. Um, oh, I thought you had it. I, I do, but I can wait. I, I want to say $100,000 that was written down for this project it includes the emergency generator that will help to run the senior center um, and keep our servers from going down for our computer information. Um, and on Friday, I received a call from Representative Gregory, and she told me that she is determined to go to bat for us, and I don't think we should waste that. Uh, I, I would like to add that the, the way the appropriation ask was written, because it includes over $100,000, I think $120,000 to do the facility needs assessment and master planning. And then the rest of the money is to do the indoor air quality, the ADA accessibility, the HVAC, the emergency power generator. But that said, I want to be real clear that the other money <coughs> that's not included is the cost to have us relocated out of the building while those improvements would be. And that's that four hundred and some thousand dollars. 
I just wanted a clarification. Can we ask a question? No, this is a council discussion. But if the council hasn't considered an option like renting space, sorry. I think looking at the legislature's history, we might actually be well advised to ask for not enough money and go halfway through the project and tell them, oops, it's not enough. If you look at every project the legislature funds, that's how they fund it. Name a project that they intentionally funded adequately to begin with and nobody came back and asked for more money. I think it would be wonderful if we could get enough money to do the whole thing in one grant, but that's not the way they work. They get used to giving people money and they keep giving those people more money. The comments that I got on Friday were, Chris said we're way asking for four million. I think we can help you. <laughs> I mean, that's the comments that I got. And again, um, Representative Gregory, as well as sitting down with this is our Senator Melosha. They haven't helped Pacific in a while. They're very interested in helping us. So I guess, unless there's further questions, maybe we should have a motion or something, because I'm hearing discussion as, as far as if we want to move forward with turning in. I certainly need guidance uh, from the council related to whether we make the appropriation ask. That would be one uh, action I, I would like to see from council. The other would be some guidance related to the indoor air quality project uh, status of that as well at this point.
I wasn't sure you would ever get to the <coughs> place of emotion. A barrier is a $400,000 relocation? Okay, sure. Gene Pantry, 3724850 Fifth Avenue South, journeyman carpenter on a lot of rehab projects. Um, many businesses relocate, but they don't put up portables. They rent retail space, and it seems to me there's a lot of retail space available on County Line Road and the new building going up near the service station on Valentine, has anybody looked into the costs associated with renting retail space for the city hall functions for six months, a year, year and a half? That's all. Thanks. I can, I can respond quickly. No, I have not looked at uh, any real estate that may be in the area. That, that was not... Um, part of my charter, if you will, the direction that I was given to look at the project. So I have not looked at uh, other space. Don Thompson, 416 Second Avenue Southeast. I have a couple of questions and a couple of suggestions. Well, one question is, are these walls lapped in plastic? For sheet block, that means that there's been some upgrading done in this building. They we should look at the get a hold of the school, look at the history of the building, because rumor has it the building's older than planned. So <coughs> there might be some upgrades made to this building. Then they'll take it. if there is, that will uh, help out. As far as portable scope, why run them? Just buy them. Buy them outright. Then turn around and sell them when we're done with them. Because any project going on here, it's not going to happen in two or three months. It's going to happen possibly in a year, maybe two years. So, so thought, thank you. Thank you. Further comments from the audience? Yes. Yeah. Could I add one comment? <coughs> Go ahead. I'm, not, I'm a little confused about the different options that you mentioned. Can you associate a price tag with each one of those options? Jerry, Ooh, I need you to come to the microphone, please. Oh. Name and address for the room. <coughs> Jerry at 411 West Valley Highway South. Yeah, I'm a little confused on the different options. <coughs> I'm sure I'd we'll like to hear. I'd like to hear what they were. Each one would cost. I don't think I put a price tag to each one. It was just that was to facilitate the conversation tonight. It, it wasn't that I had provided a full-blown cost analysis, and I think that was part of the point in the exercise of raising these options, that there are some unknowns for the different options. And, you know, building a new city hall, I, I don't have a cost for that. That's something to the earlier comment, you would need some additional thought, and I think the professional architects are, are really the way to go in, in that arena. But option two, the one you asked specifically about, the needs assessment and the master planning for not only the city hall buildings and the campus, plus the public works uh, shop building in the future, that's estimated at about $120,000 to do a study. And it doesn't, it doesn't build anything, but it does give you the uh, conceptual drawings. It does identify cost opinions for, can flesh out master, all of those options. Plan. Yes. Is that like Councilman Cave's idea about going with that option? Well, and it's and part I, of our app. Yeah. So, so well, I think that'd be a bargain. So, the other stuff, I don't know. The ADA stuff, if I have to do it, it's I think the city should do. Um, <laughs> That's so, a very good point. <laughs> anyway, that's it. Thank you. Thank you, Jerry. For the comments from the audience. Okay, so on the motion to move forward with turning in the appropriations act to the legislature, there's a motion on the floor. We'll call it council. Member Jones. Aye. Council Member Kane. Aye. Council Member Oliveira. Aye. 
Knight. Councilmember Putnam. Aye. Councilmember Steiger. No. Councilmember Walker. Aye. Councilmember Gargani. Aye. Motion carried. Appreciate it. Thank you, Council.